Here, Nadia, are you ready to get this show on the road? <laughs> All right, well, thank you again. For those who don't know me, my name is Danika Dorsey and I am the account manager here in the Central Valley. I service far south as Bakersfield up to Modesto. So if I haven't had the chance to meet you, I'm looking forward to getting out there and meeting you and possibly setting up a lunch um, or just visiting your office and dropping off some of our great swag that we have here. Um, I'd like to also introduce my guest, Nadia Dow. Um, I'm gonna allow her to introduce herself as well. Um, I'm so thankful that you're able to join us today, Nadia. And um, yes, without further ado, I, like I said, if you guys have any questions, I would like you guys to get out there and ask your questions. You can put them in the chat and I'll read them out for you. Um, so I do have some questions myself that I've been hearing out in the field. I'm gonna go ahead and ask Nadia. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> so we'll just get started. Um, all right, Nadia. So while I'm out in the field and I'm talking to my clients about vouchers and just trying to educate and give them some information, um, a lot of the questions that I get uh, start with, you know, well, what schools do you work with? Who are you working with? And, and so can you just elaborate and explain to the good people who we work with and why? Hello, good people. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, I've always found that a very awkward question to be asked, and this is why. Whoever the law firm partners with, they should be working with a counselor that is working with all post-secondary accredited schools statewide. So when I'm asked what school we work with, we don't work with just 20 or 30 or 40, we're working with every single program out there that is on the ETPL list and is post-secondary approved. For those of you who don't understand that, here's the way I'll explain it. If a school especially would lose funding or would be found fraudulent or whatever it is, and they close down, there is nothing to protect the individual other than the fact that we can then hold uh, the insurance company, you know, liable and say, you know, we've done everything appropriately. We've gone to the preferred vendor list of the post-secondary accredited ETPL. And therefore we would have protection if that school were to, you know, not be in existence anymore. And so we are very proactive at Gemini, not only to use the schools that we know that are on the ETPL list, but we also proactively go out in the field and search them out because the, the best audience are the clients because we get so many curious, uh, you know, clients that are like, hey, I really wanna know about Androids or I wanna know about, you know, uh, um, doing podcasts or, you know, and so there's so many creative entities that come that if we look on the ETPL list and we identify that there's none in their area, we're proactively looking for those schools, those programs. It's no longer about cake decorating and floral arrangement. It runs the whole gamut now. So to answer again, we work with every single post-secondary accredited school. Okay, thank you. And how does that benefit? I know you elaborated a little bit. Can you just go a little further and how that does benefit the injured worker? Um, or what exactly post-secondary accredited school means? Uh, yeah, so the post-secondary accredited school are the schools that are approved statewide that are on a list that they can look on the DIR website and identify the programs, you know, and identify the schools. And so when we're dealing with the schools, the first thing that we do is make sure that their accreditation is up to date on a daily basis, because what could have been up to date last week may not be up to date this week. So that's one of the processes that we make sure we handle. And, um, you know, as far as using the schools uh, versus a counselor, um, I, I just, uh, I've, I've gotten that question from your people a lot too. Yes, why, that was actually gonna be my next question. So why should we use a counselor versus um, just sending them directly to a school? So again, the school has a curriculum, right? And that curriculum is already identified. There's no way to change that curriculum or 
to, you know, ad lib, you know, here, here's an extra 500 for this, for this. The curriculum is what it is. So uh, if the injured worker goes to a school directly, either by themselves or by an attorney suggesting a particular school, again, there's multiple issues that arise. If a school is not post-secondary accredited, if something transpires, who do they turn to? Remember, the voucher benefit is different from the work comp benefit. So if they've got a counselor, there's already money allotted underneath that $6,000 voucher for that, for that safety. Imagine the client, how daunting it is for them to even go through the workers' comp process without an attorney and without guidance, how that would be during the vocational rehab process as well. And so the counselor is the one who's going to take care of them from beginning to end regardless of what the issues are in between, to make sure that they're successfully placed, that they're happy, that they're doing the progress that they need, that there's everything is taken care of. And so when an individual is sending to a particular school, you're kind of taking the power out of the injured worker's hands because if that school doesn't offer what they maybe thought they wanted and without doing the exploration, now they're confined to whatever the school offers. So whatever that school offers is what it is. Whereas a counselor is going to identify what their background is, what their restrictions are, medical limitations, their educational background, what their envisionment of what their next happy path in life is gonna be. And so you're getting them very excited about their whole process. And so you're taking care of them and identifying that and doing the vocational exploration with them. That's right. That's well, that's awesome. Um, thank you for that. That was a lot of great information. There's the money. If it's not utilized, it, you know, it's it's not like it can be everything is under code, right? Under the six thousand dollar voucher. You've got your amount for the RTW benefit. You've got your amount for the reimbursement. You've got your amount for the school. You've got your amount for the counselor. So it, it would just make sense since it's already allotted for. Otherwise, if a school is going to take that money, where are they putting it? What are they utilizing it for extra for the client? It, it, it really is a very uh, interesting scenario because why wouldn't you have a counselor? It doesn't cost the client anything. And remember, it's 10% of the 600. So it's not like we're always going to take 600. It depends on the individual, uh, rather take, you know, utilize the 600. So if somebody has something in mind, you know, and we're able to adapt and take care of that quickly and easily, then we, we are going to a lot. And that's where the wiggle room is. You know, there may not be wiggle room with the school. You don't want to give wiggle room with the $1,000 reimbursement. And you don't want to do that with their 500. That's their benefits. Where it comes in is, is this money allotted correctly? And that's why having a counselor protects them in every way, shape. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for explaining that the way you did. Before I go on to the next couple of questions, I do want to pause and see if the audience has any questions, if they have any questions you'd like to ask about anything Nadia went over, um, we'll just give them a couple of seconds here. If you guys have anything. I would also like, because Nadia has a lot of experience, um, we do have what is ETPL stand for? Okay, so I am going to forward this, excuse me for getting up for a second, because it's a, it's an educational uh, preferred, uh, um, and so then I can forward it, it's the ETPL training, and there's a whole description, so it's an el eligible training provider list. That's what ETPL stands for, but underneath it, you can see just what is allotted, and it also gives provisions directly to the DIR for all the programs in all of California, North and um, This is what I was going to, I'm so glad that Blanca brought up this question because I do want to take a couple minutes for Nadia to um, give a little bit of her background and a little bit about herself and her experience as a counselor. Nadia, if you would, please. So Just, you're such an awesome person and you have myself. <laughs> so, you have so much knowledge. So I would love to um, have you just talk about that a little bit. Okay, well, I've been in the industry for a very long time. 
I was in the industry for some of you who even know what labor code 139.5 is before that. I started my path uh, with Vocade uh, in, the, in the old days, you know, where counselors were the ones who were the middle person for the client, for the adjuster, for the attorney, worked with the doctor on representative job analysis, on-site job analysis, identifying, you know, the vocational RU102 plans, those old antique blue pages. Uh, that's where I come from. So I've been a counselor for over 20 years. Uh, I'm also an IBE, which doesn't mean anything now. It's an initial vocational evaluator. It means somebody who's pursued their education where essentially your, your decision can be rendered by the higher authorities. Um, and so I started in a counseling firm, which is where uh, the traditional counselor started with, where, where, uh, where I was a multilingual vocational rehabilitation counselor. I'm quintilingual, I speak five languages. And so that's always served me really well uh, for for having you know, the opportunity and, and exposure to being able to work with multicultural uh, individuals and backgrounds, that's super exciting. Um, that's yeah. one of the things that we take advantage of here at Gemini because uh, we've gotten such exotic languages and some of them, you know, we just, uh, our team has eight case managers and they're all fluently bilingual, but you'll sometimes get somebody who, you know, is maybe uh, Vietnamese or something. And so what we try to identify then is even to find a school that has an instructor that speaks in their language. Because as you know, uh, having an interpreter is not paid for under this. It's not like through the whole work comp case where, you know, when you're going to the doctors and you're doing depots, you've got somebody who's going to be able to speak on behalf of the client and communicate that to all the parties. So uh, in my mind, and, I, and I'm sure in all of your minds, it always makes it so much nicer when you can have the comforts of home and have an individual who may be exposed to a community that's similar, where they can communicate with other people, and especially in the school training setting, an instructor that's going to be able to assist them. So you're looking at every aspect of that success for that individual, which is super exciting. That is. And thank you for taking that time to explain Thanks your so background much. and um, so I do have, um, so I do have a question from, uh, let's see, someone is asking, what is the geographic area that you cover, um, or that we cover as in our voucher? We division? cover the whole state of California. Yes. From here state. in Batu. Uh, you know, we cover the whole gamut of the whole state. So just because somebody is in, uh, Rancho Cucamonga doesn't mean that you can't take care of them for Sacramento. Uh, again, the ETPL list is our friend. It lets us know what programs are out there. And the more you work with all these schools, the more that you're familiar with what, what areas. Uh, sometimes it's farmlands and you're trying to identify something that's close to the individual if they're taking advantage of going to an actual classroom and not an online. If it's an online, it's quite simple, but uh, we're always taking into consideration their geographical locale. It doesn't make sense to make somebody drive 100 miles to a school when there's a school right around the corner from them that's approved. And so always taking that into consideration. It's always the whole picture, you know, because a lot of the individuals may have transportation issues and they may be relying on public transportation. So you always want to accommodate them the easiest path of least resistance. In, right. every, in every way, that's in right. Every, <laughs> yeah, I'm really passionate when it comes to the injured worker because I, I, uh, I think it's just so hard, especially for people that have worked so hard so long in their lives, and and you know to be able to let them see the rainbow at the end of the tunnel and see, hey, you've actually got some transferable skills here. You know, your your life hasn't stopped. It can go on and what are you what are you hoping is your next path in life it's super exciting so we're very passionate about what we do over here if yes. you can't tell <laughs> i can see it and yes we are um yes, would you mind, 
<laughs> I, I'm actually quintilingual. So I was brought up in Venezuela. Again, my background, I'm a New Yorker, brought up in Venezuela. And for the first nine years, didn't know a word of English. As a matter of fact, when I came back to the US, they put me back a grade because I didn't remember my English because I wasn't exposed to it. So fluently bilingual in Spanish and English, if you're asking me that, yes, read, write, and speak. So Nadia, can you, if you don't mind, going over a little bit of the voucher process. So I know what I do when I receive a voucher from um, my client from the attorney's office and how I process them, but can you just kind of go over the voucher process as in when, when the individual or when the, devout, the voucher division, what they do once they receive that voucher? So again, uh, Danica is your go-to person. Uh, if you're giving it to Danica in hand in the office via email, we're gonna get that via email. For those of you who use Mary's case, you can just send us an email and say, you know, the client is uh, there. You can send us a fax. You can call us on the phone. You can call me, you can email me. There's multiple ways. There's no lack of techie techie here for you guys to send the referrals. And once we get the referral, we're already confirming immediately that because there's always somebody looking at the emails and the faxes, right? Uh, they're automatically confirming that they've received it. So rest assured, you then know that we've got everything we need. And if we need anything else, we'll ask. Usually what it is, is it may be just the demo sheet. If you haven't had the voucher yet, but you know that they're entitled to the voucher, then we're going to go ahead and communicate with the insurance company and try and get that voucher for the client. If you have a copy of the voucher, great. We then contact the client within a 24 hour span. That's the way it's set up. We don't make the client wait. And then when I do the initial, I'm also communicating and making sure that we process their RTW fund right away. Uh, I know that there are a lot of schools. That's another thing about schools. You know, if you think how a school thinks, you know, well, we're not going to do all this work for you and then you're not going to sign up with our school. So they're probably going to hold off in processing all the necessary paperwork for you. We don't do that. The money is super important for these individuals. You know, a lot of people think that because they've gotten their case monies, you know, the, that, that extra $5,000 from the state is there for them. And it's such a time sensitive, crucial uh, you know, and especially with the lags of the state, you don't want to take that for granted and never miss a beat with that. So especially when you're asking the client, you know, uh, would you like to go out and buy a computer if you're looking at that kind of program, and then you'll get reimbursed by the insurance company, and they're waiting for that lag time to try and get the RTW expedited means everything for them, and it allows the process to even be smoother. So once we contact them, uh, we're explaining to them all their benefits, right? Uh, the RTW benefits, the benefits under the voucher, identifying, you know, what their background is, what their injuries are, because the whole idea is hopefully to retrain them in something where they're not interfering with their restrictions. We're getting that background from them and really understanding the individual as a whole. And then we start doing vocational exploration based on what they're interested in. And then once vocational exploration commences, once they've identified, hey, you know what? I went to this school or I identified this school and this is really the school I wanna to go to, we start uh, taking care of that to get them uh, started in their program. So again, they're never left alone. There's always a pattern to everything and it's as interactive as, as it can be. That's really good to know. I'm glad that you touched on that again, because it could be a daunting process for them um, to start that new career. So just knowing and reassuring your clients that this, you know, that's what the counselor is for. They will walk you through that process. Um, so thank you for that. I do have a couple questions here I'd like to ask. Um, let's see, does the voucher expire and can the injured worker get the voucher before the case is closed? Okay, so part one, does the voucher expire? Yes. There's always an expiration on any benefit, right? Usually it's five years as of the time of injury or two years as of PNS, uh, you know, permanent and stationary. Um, and uh, uh, the second part of the question is- Can the injured worker get the voucher before the case closed? Yes, they can. Uh, so understanding that 
it's the communication that you're having with the defense attorney and the adjuster and what they're having with the employer. If there's already, uh, you know, one establishment that identifies, look, we're not going to be able to accommodate this individual. They're not going to be able to go back to their UNC usual and customary position, or there's no modified alternate work. It can certainly be before the case gets settled. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I encourage that because remember, the injured worker is waiting there while you uh, wonderful attorneys are taking care of everything behind the scenes for them. It can lag a lot of times. And so this person is is just sitting there, not not feeling uh, fulfilled, not feeling, you know, uh, capable of doing anything. So the more that you can enthrall them in something that gets them excited, I encourage that all the way. Did I answer all your questions? So, yeah, so I have, um, how shall we tell the clients to contact, um, to contact you? Um, should you use the, I think, yes, if you have the, the brochures that I left with you guys, then um, you can definitely contact the number there or the email that's on there. Or the um, number. Or the fax number, yes, or the fax there. Um, so just really quick, it looks like I made a little bit of a tech issue when I was sending out the reminder. So everyone is coming up under the same name. So if you would just be so kind just to type in your name in the chat section, um, that way I just know that you're here because I would love to follow up with you and um, just see, just get some feedback from you and see how Hi, thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate that. Eric, can you give my contact info? I see a couple of people are asking for that. My cell phone number, my email. Uh, I'm happy to answer any phone calls. Danica can set up any Q&As that you may be interested in. Uh, I, I love having conversations with everybody um, and spending time and being able to explain any scenario. It can be picking my brain for something that you might think. I, I don't know if you saw the webinar that we just recently did, but that one focused on strategies, how uh, attorney offices utilize the voucher to strategize and work their, their case uh, you know, to completion or to disability or whatever it is. So if you haven't gotten that one, I think we have a recording of it, right, Danica? Right, Eric? Yes. yes. And can go ahead if you like that. I'm sure Danica will be kind enough to forward that to you all. Yes, absolutely. If you're interested in that, I can go ahead and get that forwarded to you. Um, before the questions, I do want to ask. 10% um, of the vocational counseling, 600. 600 is the maximum. And, and here's an interesting thing for you. I have come across situations where certain entities have taken the amount and left the client, they've gotten maybe the RTW, but now there's no money to do vocational exploration. They've already billed for that. And the client is no better for the wearer. They're nowhere near you know, completing exploration or even having an identifiable program. And so I've been asked from time to time, you know, can, what can we do in this case? You know, uh, again, this is where you reach out to the insurance company, but the insurance company really can't do much because they build for the amount already. So it, it's, it's not available for anybody else to work on that case uh, for them, you know, and, and that's the hardship that really affects and impacts the injured worker at the end of the day. So we, we're not billing a flat 600 every single time automatically. We're making sure that the client is taken care of and that the vocational objective was identified and that they're starting in their program before we're even asking to, you know, uh, encounter that. So uh, imagine, imagine having no monies to do any exploration. And here again, like I said, it's a daunting process. What is the injured worker expected to do? So... I'm very sympathetic and uh, to that situation as well. All right. Um, thank you, Nadia. So I do have one or one more question that I'd like to ask. Um, what percentage of vouchers that we receive actually get utilized wow. that we receive from the offices? 
Yeah. You know, I'm so glad you asked that because we just did a, 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 a current metrics of that and you're going to have your mind blown because I don't know if, if we just found this out at the last webinar. 87%, 86.9, if I'm writing it up, 87% of wow. all couch referrals that we're getting are being utilized. That's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Means that they're really excited, not just about collecting the RTW benefit, the state benefit, and that's again only if they're post 2013, because if they're pre 2013, they're not even getting that benefit. But if they're post 2013, they're getting the 5,000. But to be able to excite them to mm -hmm. do something right. with the actual voucher, that is the end all be all. You know, now you've got to complete all the ingredients to make a yummy pie. Right. Uh, that's really exciting. So yeah, 86.7 and climb 89 uh, 86.9 and climbing. I rounded off to 87%. But that, that lets you know the voucher is being utilized. And super exciting. You know, this, this benefit is not going away. And hopefully they're going to take it more serious and see just how beneficial it is. That's yes, that's absolutely, you're absolutely right. And that is a good number. Wow, that's, that's impressive. I love that. I love, love to hear that. Does anyone have any more questions that they'd like to uh, have Nadia cover? Anything that you're asked by your clients or that can make this process go a little bit smoother for you in your office? Anything we'll out there? The test and see if I really speak Spanish. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Test her on any of those other languages that she speaks. <laughs> you guys can ask her anything that. So if the carrier doesn't pay timely, can we get a 10% penalty? That's the one I'm reading from Blanca. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, you guys are the attorneys. I would never, ever, ever stray out of my lane. Okay, and, and that reminds me, like, I'll just defer that for a second. When I'm asked by a client, am I going to be taxed for the money that I'm getting from the state? I never want to claim that I know. I can say, well, in general, it, it shouldn't be, but I would suggest that you speak to your attorney and or your tax person. We, being the experts in our lane, stay in our lane. We don't want to give information that is incorrect. Uh, so with this said, if you have it documented in your CNR and you've got the information, there could be a percentage of, of penalty, but it's so convoluted and there's so many aspects of that, that I'd hate to give you a yes, Blanca, or a no, because it just depends on so many multiple layers that are happening within the case. And it depends on if there, if you can prove documentation, if there was a specific date that you chose, if it's, you know, if, if you're counting the weekend and they're just counting the weekdays, it's on so many different things that I don't feel that that would be fair to answer. Other than the way I've answered. <laughs> <laughs> so just a reminder, everyone's coming up under the same name. Um, but there's, there's obviously there's different people on here. Um, and that was my, that was my error when I sent out the, the reminder link, um, it says it, so it says, what is the placement rate post? Uh, That's the one I was looking at too. Um, so the placement rate, uh, again, a lot of this has been done via metrics and taking everything into consideration. Our placement rate for last year was probably about 88% to 89% of all the graduates that completed the training program were doing something, whether it was self-employment mode, internship paid, or working for somebody. Again, it's, it's a very creative and interesting process, right? Because there are people that may be retired and may want to learn something, to do something on the side as a part-time, other people that want to work for themselves or educate themselves to get the, the essential benefits of being able to know how to operate a computer, 
uh, people who go into business with other people. So it, we're, we're working on those different ones and actually subcategorizing those as we speak. So as soon as we have that report, I'm sure Danico will love to share that with you. But uh, the, the other thing is when you're working with a school that is on the ETPL list and post-secondary accredited, you know that they're also assisting with placement and you're also guiding them, right? And letting them know where they can look for other resources, who they can network with, what they can do. And, and the great thing about it is you don't always know where they've landed, but other than you know these beautiful cards that you get along the way saying thank you or seeing them at graduation because we're, we're, we've been inundated with graduations uh, via Zoom, you know, and, and, and having them tell their stories about where they landed. So uh, we're still collecting that data just to make it really accurate but um, you know, when everything is aligned correctly and it's ultimately up to that individual, you know, they may not want to work uh, for a job that they've identified that they wanted to before. And now they're reaching for something different because the training allowed them to open up their minds and their horizons and see that they can get actually more to it. So we're still working with that, but it's a great question. And as soon as we get all the different metrics, I'm sure Danica will be happy to share that with you. Absolutely. Um, I do have a question here from Gwen. I spoke with a client who um, they already know how to weld, so they would like the equipment. Is that possible? Okay, so here's, here's the, the answer to that. If I get the individual and they were already in a welding position and they've been injured and those restrictions interfere with that, no, doesn't make sense, does it? The whole idea is to utilize those funds for something that's going to enable them to do whatever they're going to choose and select in the future. So they're always going to get the $5,000. I always say, look, you know, you can do whatever you want with your monies. Hopefully you're not doing anything that re-injures you. Hopefully you're taking advantage of the voucher to see that, you know, because if you have a welder, Gwen, for example, um, you could go to a welding company with all the knowledge that you have as a welder and you could become a supervisor or, you know, a dispatcher for people if you're doing residential or commercial. So here's where my mind goes, just to share with you. So the question I would have for them is, I know you love welding and, you know, you've got injuries that are going to interfere with that. You know, do you know how to operate the computer or do you think about what your supervisor uh, responsibility was in that position? And if they say, yeah, there's a particular course, you know, that would enable me to get that kind of position, then that's what I'm looking at. I'm not just looking for a move. I'm looking for them to be able to grow and enhance and, and be even more than what they anticipated. So in that particular uh, example, the, the gentleman was actually not a welder. Okay. Um, he, his injury is uh, bilateral feet. Okay, bilateral feet. And so if the restrictions are, you know, no heavy lifting, no repetitive standing, no prolonged weight bearing, whatever it is, when we're looking at those restrictions, are we then identifying a vocational objective that is in line with getting welding equipment? So it has to mesh, right? Because you don't want the individual to come back and say, well, I got my welding equipment, but now that I'm taking this course, I need uh, all my tools for light auto mechanic repair. Where's that money coming from? So it all has to make sense. You want to set them up for success, not for failure. And, and that's ultimately, if that's something, you know, there's people that want certain certifications, right? And the certification costs $475. Am I going to tell them to use their voucher for that? No. I'm going to say, look, if that's the way that you're going to go ultimately, then by all means, but the voucher, the, the adjuster and the insurance company and your attorney have afforded you this opportunity to really be able to take advantage of something that's going to benefit you long haul. So therefore, take advantage of it and utilize it accordingly. So everything has to mesh and jive. Uh, the other question that I also saw, Danica, is what types of positions are they getting? Right. Oh, I mean, right now, some of the hottest ones that... Uh, I got three greeting cards from clients. Uh, one is working for Amazon. Uh, they're a customer service rep working from home. 
making twice the amount that they were getting before working from home. Uh, they have a beautiful speaking voice. They're bilingual. So bilingual, you know, allows the person to get more money. Um, you've got other people that are going into their own employment. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a story, a couple of stories. Am I allowed to give a couple of stories if I don't mention any names? And David, will you allow me that, Danica? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Just no names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're right. No names. No names. Yeah. Stories are good. So, Examples are good. I had a client that most people would think would be very challenging, right? Uh, she was 75 years old. She's connected to the hip to her husband. They're a lovely couple. She just wanted her RTW. She didn't want to do anything with the voucher. And as I'm talking to her, you know, uh, I'm hearing dogs in the background. And I'm like, gosh, how many dogs do you guys have? And she says, we have five dogs. We were never able to have children. And so these are our babies. Yeah. And so I don't want to get emotional, but what was really cool is as that opened up Pandora's box into having her speak about what she was excited about. And I, and, and I realized, why aren't you using your voucher to do like a doggy day grooming or learn how to be a vet? And she said, you can do that. Absolutely. And so Again, it just goes back to really exploring what their passions and their interests are and having that formula of taking into consideration their medical restrictions, you know, so that they don't hurt themselves again and taking into consideration their comforts and what they know and what they don't know. Are they a high school grad? Do they want to pursue that? It's all that, all bundled up in one. And so once you get them excited about that and they realize that that it, it, it can be done in that way. And she was thrilled. And so now I, I had a dog that just passed away. Everybody knows that. And my dog used to go to them. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they lived in the same area. So yeah. both, you know? that's a great story. Thank you for sharing, Nadia. It's just you get really examples of the people that you work with. Thank you, Danica. I'm, um, I'm trying to catch up with you. <laughs> so one of the other questions, um, I guess it's a two and one with the what type of positions are they getting and then is, are the pay scales higher than their previous positions? I'm not sure if you can touch on that a little bit. So think about this. Think about an individual who speaks Spanish. Uh, they've been a blue collar worker uh, all their lives. And now they've hurt the part of the body that they're used to working with. And, and think about them when you ask them, do you have a computer home? No. You don't know how to operate a computer? No. And they were maybe getting $15, $17, right? If you allow them, here's, here's the, just the, like a simple one, you know, I'm just giving you a simple example. If you allow them to then enhance their skills, right? Because they speak Spanish beautifully, they have a beautiful telephonic voice. Why can't they be a customer service rep? And if they're taking care of their wife at home or whatever and afford them the opportunity to work from home. Now, if you've ever identified when you call uh, Visa, electric company, gas company, it always says, if you need to speak to somebody in Spanish, would you like to press one? And if you need to speak to somebody in English, please press two or stay on the line. Well, those people that are now able to communicate with their fellow people in the prominent language that this person needs, whatever it may be, Spanish, you know, Russian, Vietnamese, whatever, you've now created a pocket where your transferable skills automatically are going to enhance your viability to get more money. So, uh, I mean, if you look at the dictionary of occupational titles and the salaries for some of these customer service reps that are getting paid working from home, you're looking at 22, 24, 26, depending on where they're landing. So yes, right. the whole idea in my mind, in my mind, uh, as an old voc rehab counselor, you know, that used to do things the old ways and you know, monitor and do the RE102 and do the placement and the expiration and, and everything with them is to enhance whatever they've got going for them. That's the excitement because right. they can go 
no longer do what they were doing. So now you have to give them another pathway. And another pathway doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to start an entry level. Sometimes it may lead to that if they have something specific, like they want phlebotomy. Yeah, okay, you know, you're starting in the medical field. But if you've got a medical assistant who already has done medical coding and billing, phlebotomy, they're not interested in anything. Now what you're looking is benefits explanation, administrator of benefits. Well, that opens up a whole new net for them of being able to get salaries that are even higher than what they anticipated. And right. so that's the idea. That's really why you, you, you're doing it. Right. So at what point do they offer, uh, they refer, I'm sorry, the injured worker to you? Um, and do we get referrals from applicants' attorneys only? But at what point do Applicants' attorneys only, meaning uh, you'll have, so here's the thing. You'll have individuals that are, are savvy enough that they know either they've spoken to somebody else or maybe the attorney has given them an opportunity to say, hey, you know, there's vocational schools and there's vocational counselors. So the referrals could come in from the injured worker. It could come in from the applicant attorney. Uh, you know, there has even been discussions with some uh, adjusters that are like, you know, hey, I don't know where to lead them to. Uh, the average one will come from an applicant attorney because they're the savviest knowing where their case is at. They're the ones that are in constant communication. But it could be from an individual who's just calling and saying, hi, you know, I've got this. Can you please explain it to me? Mm -hmm. You know, and in your explanation of their benefits, maybe they decide to go with you because they think that you're going to do them right. Did I answer and then that? At what, yes, that second one. And then at what point um, do the injured worker get referred to you? So if they accept yeah. Yes, with an accepted case, right? So I, I've had attorneys that say, look, I've got a CNR. I just took over the case. The person just came, their case settled. Can I have them contact you so that you can explain their benefits? They've got a lot of questions. You know, they've got a lot of questions. What does this mean? What is this? Should I fill out the paperwork myself? Can you help me fill out the paperwork? It goes on and on and on. You know, imagine applicant attorneys, your own clients, how much they're re relying on you to answer every step of the way, what's going on with theirs. They want to know what's going on. So in that case, you know, we could get the case when you identify that the person is going to be entitled to a voucher. That's probably the best answer, entitled to a voucher. You know, uh, that can be whether it's discussion uh, with, with the defense, whether it's the CNR, and you're waiting for the voucher, whether they've, they're, they're in the process of doing the voucher within the time frame allotted, but you just want to get them excited and get them going. So they're asking basically after the CNR, is that? I mean, you know, a CNR is a great one. It can be before the CNR. Again, it goes back to those questions, uh, you know, can you get a voucher before the case is even settled? Everything is contingent on that particular case. Right. Everything is contingent on, have we received the PNS from the main doctor, the AME, the PQME? Are you guys agreeing? And if all parties agree and anticipate that this is going to be something that's not going to uh, amount to, you know, because there's a, a there's a 60 day time frame where they can identify whether or not this person is able to go back to their UNC, it's all in play. So it, it has a lot to do with the communication that the applicant attorney and the adjuster and the defense have. The communication is vital. Uh, and so, yeah, it can be before their CNR. There may be a CT, there may be multiple ADJs. I mean, you could get multiple vouchers. I, mm -hmm. I've, I've had people, individuals, and I don't say this in an excited way because it just goes to show you how many body parts they've got injured, who I've gotten four vouchers for. Four right. separate vouchers mm -hmm. on different dates of injuries and different body parts. Right. That's a lot of good information, Nadia. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. We're 10 minutes till three, and I would I'd love to end on time because I know um, everyone's busy and just want to respect your time. 
um, everyone's time. So is there anything else that you you guys would like to ask Nadia while I have her here? It's like gold. <laughs> She's <laughs> full of information. You will run after three o'clock. We'll be here until seven o'clock and it'll be happy. I know. Hour. I know. Then we'll have to bust out the happy hour. Yes. <laughs> so is there anything else that I can ask her or I can, I can, uh, and I just wanted to for you, your people, your, your clients. Thank you, Danica, for putting this together. Thank you, Eric, for being the moderator. I certainly do appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I do want to emphasize that any point in time, if you guys want to do a zoom just for your own basic Q and A's or discuss a particular case or strategizing or whatever it may be, please feel free to reach out to Danica and ask her to connect us or reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Absolutely. She definitely is. And we're getting lots of thanks through the chat. So yes, thank you guys. A lot of information. Really appreciate. I really feel like this was a great educational um, process and, and Zoom question and answers for you guys. So again, if you just to reiterate what Nadia said, if you guys want to do a one on one with her, um, just let me know. You can contact me through email or phone. Um, hopefully I get to run into you at the office. Um, I am traveling again. So um, I'm trying to get out there even to Santa Maria to meet you, Crystal. So hopefully that can be soon. Um, but again, if you guys have anything else, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll get that. Um, we'll get something set up with Nadia. So thank you so much, everybody. I certainly your time. Thank you, Danica, again, for such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much. All right. You got, all right, you guys. You guys have a great day, and I'll be in touch soon. Take care.